Good afternoon. <laughs> Families and friends, I present to you the UC Berkeley Letters in Science, Computer Science, graduating class of 2023. For those of you who don't know, uh, this major has a number of distinctions. The largest major on the UC Berkeley campus. On a good day, I like to think we're among the most sharply dressed. <laughs> Certainly, have the most hours on Piazza, Ed, and Gradescope. You know what I'm talking about. Our graduates have experienced a lot during their time with us at Berkeley, and we believe that it's made them stronger and more resilient. So glad to have you here to celebrate young folks here with the training experiences to make a positive impact on the world. We're so proud of them. Can I invite you all to have a seat? I'm David Wagner, I'm the chair of the computer science division, and today I have the honor of presiding over today's commencement ceremony. I get to be here together with you all to recognize the tremendous achievements of our graduates. At our commencement today, we have a number of distinguished faculty and speakers in attendance. Thank you for being in attendance with, with us today. The past few years have been quite a trip. Many of the graduating seniors here today have faced an unprecedented surprise during their first year at Berkeley, the COVID pandemic. And I feel for all of you who went through that. Did you ever think you'd be spending so many hours on Zoom? I've got a Zoom joke for you. I know, you're probably tired of them by now. Uh, you know how you the pronu pronounce um, the word tsunami. With the word tsunami, the T is silent, right? And with the word island, the S is silent. With um, honest, the H is silent. With Q, the U, E, U, E is silent. With Zoom, the whole class is silent. Dear graduates, I want to recognize you all face trying to learn from home without your friends and fellow students around you um, in their first and second year here at Berkeley, without in-person support from faculty, teaching assistants, and staff. I've seen how hard it was for many of you. And I'm so inspired by your resilience and your perseverance. So why are we here studying computer science? Uh, for some of, some of our students, um, it's the excitement of creating technology um, that's now connected um, over four billion people in the world, more than, it's connected more than half of the world's uh, population. More people uh, in the world today connect to the internet using a mobile phone than use a toothbrush. Um, and we're excited to be able to use this interconnection to communicate and collaborate. We get to do amazing science with computers, we get to design new drugs, study the stars. 
For other students, it's the opportunity to apply this technology to improve the lives of people in the parts of the world where the basic necessities of food and water and sanitation, medical care, safety remain a daily challenge. During the pandemic, we've seen how people in some areas have suffered disproportionately, and some of our graduates are working to make a difference. For others, still, it's the vision of creating the startup that captures the imagination of millions of people, adds something new and amazing to their lives and their relationships. There are many reasons why people study computer science, uh, but perhaps the overarching answer is simple. Why study computer science to change the world? We can see how much computing has transformed the world, certainly within my lifetime and arguably within your lifetimes as well. As graduates of Berkeley, you join many alumni of Berkeley CS who are doing just that. Uh, people like Diane Green, who's a pioneer in virtualization and cloud computing. Steve Wozniak, who spoke at our graduation ceremony, and a computer engineer who co-founded Apple. Bill Joy, who's been called the Thomas Edison of the internet. Eric Allman, who uh, made internet email real. Barbara Liskov and Shafi Goldwasser, uh, two researchers who received the Turing Award, which is basically like the Nobel Prize of computer science uh, for their scientific work. Eric Schmidt, former CEO of Google. Andrew Ng, who was a co-founder and head of Google Brain and the co-founder of Coursera. Tony DeRose, who heads research at Pixar Animation Studios and many more. So, my question for all of you graduates on the stage with me today is not, why did you decide to study computer science, but are you ready? You've worked hard. You've worked so hard during your time here. And I hope you've learned a lot. Are you ready now to go out and change the world? Are you? I hope so. If you're going to do that, if you're going to go out and make change in the world, I think it's important for you to appreciate where you come from, how you got here, to recognize the hopes and the sacrifices of those who've helped you along the way. And so I'd like to invite all of our graduates to stand and look out at your family and your friends who are here supporting you today and give them a big round of applause. Love it. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Go Bears. One of the great traditions of the LNSCS commencement is that we open the program with reflections and wisdom and sometimes humor from uh, several of those of you who are graduating with us today. So we've selected three of your peers to speak to you. Our student speakers were selected based on their academic achievement and their contributions to the CS community. Um, they also had to pass through a rigorous audition in front of a panel of judges, student chosen by our student affairs staff. Um, the winners uh, this year are um, 
Sanjana Milcote, Gregoria Isabel Millencipher, and James Patrick Weicker. Sanjana will be speaking first. Sanjana, would you join me? Class of 2023, faculty, families, and friends. Let's start with an icebreaker. If you were stranded on a deserted island with only what you could hold in your two hands, what would you bring with you? In my left hand, a compass, and in my right, a Swiss knife. This compass is special, and we all have one. It only points to things just outside your comfort zone, and it doesn't allow you to turn around once you've started your journey. And the Swiss knife? It's complicated. Usually, it has enough tools for us to travel where our compass points, but for us to thrive there, we must find and collect new tools to add to our set. I did not come to Berkeley an engineer. In fact, the opposite, an Indian classical dancer. I am a child of immigrants. Growing up, I went to Bharatanatyam dance class, not ballet. And when I got to Cal, I nearly gave my parents a heart attack when I told them I had a boyfriend. <laughs> Leaving home for the first time, it truly felt like I was getting dropped off on an island where I'd be stranded for four years. But I fell in love at Berkeley with that boy and everything the school represents. Berkeley's culture of innovation, social responsibility, and diversity helped me search for a major that gave me as much purpose and joy as dance. I took every type of class from English to electrical engineering and ultimately found an unlikely match in computer science. From foundational courses like 61B to upper division topics like artificial intelligence, our professors equipped our Swiss knives with tools to unleash on real world problems. Projects that started with implementing Gitlet and Pac-Man evolved into developing computer vision algorithms to detect single use plastics in the media and curating intro to CS classes to teach to underrepresented communities in the East Bay. And the most inspiring part, we took care of each other by tutoring one another, collaborating, and succeeding together. But when the pandemic hit in 2020, in the face of the American healthcare system crumbling and the increasing effects of climate change, artists were the first to suffer the loss of their livelihoods. Doctors, engineers, teachers, they were essential. And artists just weren't. Suddenly, I was again stranded between two timelines, one career path, relevant, innovative, and looking to the future, and another, an extra, fading away into history. In those trying times, art felt trivial, but without dance, my compass would not know where to point. When I think about climate change, the dancer in me cries for Mother Earth, but the engineer in me advocates for her. The artist in me protests for women's rights, but the problem solver in me ensures that our field trends in the direction of inclusivity. Paratanatyam commits me to important issues, holds me to cultural values, and connects me to my family, parents, and generations of life lessons. And now, as an engineer, I'll continue honing skills to solve the problems I am most passionate about. In our journeys, we will find ourselves on many islands, but we are not alone. Our compasses will light our way as we try to do good in this world. As long as we speak up in the face of silence, we will be the voices of hope and reason. When we use art to inspire change, we will find community, and together we'll make music so loud and beautiful that it cannot be ignored. So long as we continue reaching outside our comfort zones, we will never stop learning. We are prepared to change the world, Swiss knife and all. Congratulations to the class of 2023, Fiat Lux, and as always, go Bears. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjana. 
All right, our next student speaker will be Gregoria. Buenos tardes. Good afternoon, family and friends. Thank you for joining us today to celebrate the graduating class of 2023. <laughs> I'd like to start off by thanking a few people who have helped me get to this moment right now. To my mamá, gracias por tu amor infinito y por luchar por tus hijos. <laughs> to my brother, sister, and the rest of my family, thank you for, the, for your support and faith in me. To my man, Christian, <laughs> thank you for challenging me to the, be the best version of myself and for being home. To my mentor, Kevin, thank you for your guidance that has led me to my dreams. To my CS advisor, Lydia, thank you for believing me despite my late start in pursuing a CS degree. And finally, thank you to all the faculty and the staff who have put an incredible amount of effort into the CS curriculum here. We could give them a round of applause. <laughs> I stand here before you all with great honor and gratitude. Had you told 16-year-old me that she was going to graduate from UC Berkeley with a computer science degree, she would have been confused and asked, what is Berkeley? <laughs> because as a young Latina who comes from a low-income family and whose parents who did not attend college, prestigious schools, or any college for that matter, were not a topic of conversation for me. And unfortunately, that is the reality of many of us who come from marginalized communities. We did not have a successful path drawn out in front of us. Instead, we drew it ourselves. <laughs> when we started to take CS courses here, it was easy for us to feel out of place. Not only did we not see many others like us in the space, but it seemed like everyone else already knew exactly what to do. They already knew the CS basics, were in like two or three tech clubs, had internships line up, and they knew the answer to the, CS uh, to the Cal CS undergrad life, office hours. <laughs> Initially, at Berkeley, I felt behind, but soon I realized it was more about diverse college preparation levels. Many classmates had advantages from superior high school education or parental support. It was not necessarily greater individual capability. It is a lonely road to pursue the things we were never taught at home or by our communities. Sometimes the doubts are loud in our heads, telling us we don't belong, or we're not smart enough, or we're just not capable. And what was it that got all of us through that? Some of us say, may say friends, family, our communities, and yes, of course, it is all those things. But know that all the help and support in the world would have not mattered if it weren't for you. Know that it is you that has gotten you here, Take pride in that our desires were louder than the negative thoughts, that our resilience was louder, our determination was louder, our unique perspectives and experiences have given us the tools to push forward, and our ability to echarle ganas. <laughs> and although we may have started at different places than others, than those around us, and although we may have to get created with um, how we get things done, have confidence that you will get to wherever it is that you desire. You did it to get to Berkeley, you have now done it to graduate from Berkeley, and you will continue to do it for whatever comes next. Si se pudo y si se puede. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you, Gregoria. Our last student speaker is James. Dear class of 2023, faculty, parents, family members, and esteemed guests, um, before I begin, I want to first give the following assurance. 100% of the speech was written by a human, me, without the help of ChatGPT. <laughs> However, I give no such assurances about the content of my emails in the past few weeks, or the answers to P-sets submitted at 11.58 p.m. on a Friday night. <laughs> now, with that out of the way, let me be one of many today and in the coming weeks to wish all of the graduates here a hearty congratulations. We did it. <laughs> Through all of the trials and tribulations, and trust me, there were many, 
we persevered, we kept pushing, and we put four or eight semesters of linear algebra and discrete math p-sets, impossible to debug projects, and counting how many slip minutes we still had behind us. <laughs> Only to decide to go on to research with more linear algebra and discrete math, industry jobs full of code bases with hundreds of thousands of lines of code, or counting down how many days left until we're no longer officially enrolled students and get a different designation, officially unemployed. <laughs> so I guess the faculty did impart something onto us, uh, not the unemployed part, of course, or the mathematical maturity that still somehow it eludes me, uh, but a huge sense of determination and grit. Uh, whatever obstacle was thrown at us, whether it be a tough assignment or a tough job market, we are up for the challenge and won't be stopped on, in our drive to become the next generation of computer scientists, AI researchers, and global change makers. It would be a missed opportunity for me to stand before you all and all of the department's faculty and not dish out some praise for our wonderful professors or to get the opportunity to gloat in front of Professor Rao that I did indeed pass CS70. <laughs> because my time is li limited and I'm a little selfish, I'll briefly give a few shout outs to faculty who have impacted me personally during my time as a CS major. Anka Dragan, Sylvia Ratnasamy, and Jelani Nelson made even the most mundane aspects of constraint satisfaction problems. TCP or graph theory a little bit more exciting. Lisa Yan and John De Niro were incredibly supportive mentors for me as a GSI and a first time lecturer last summer. And of course, who could forget Nick Weaver's cat photos or his crypto rants. But above all, I want to thank all of the many TAs and tutors that were literally the reason I survived courses like CS61B, EEC16B, or CS170. Yeah. Barely. Uh, you are the reason that this department has the stellar reputation that it does. So don't let anyone tell you that you're expendable or that you're not worth it. You are worth every single penny and more. And that goes not just for the TAs here, but for every single one of us graduates. There's something special about the LNSCS program here at Berkeley. Our major combines a rigorous technical curriculum with a well-rounded liberal arts education in the College of Letters and Science. And it may be easy for us to overlook the benefits of an LNS degree or rant about having to take seven different breath courses, uh, but in a world that is increasingly relying on computer scientists to make sure that the systems we create are safe, secure, and equitable, this well-rounded education is not something to take for granted. We're graduating from the number one public university in the world. And that is something to be incredibly proud of but it also carries the responsibility for us to use our skills to make this world a better place. Or to put it in more familiar terms, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> Finally, it gives me so much pleasure to say this one last time as a UC Berkeley undergraduate, Go Bears! Thank you, James, and thank you to all of our student speakers. It's now my great pleasure to introduce to you Professor Kathy Yellick, who will deliver the faculty address. <laughs> professor Yellick is the Robert S. Pepper Distinguished Professor of Electrical Engineering and Computer Sciences and the Vice Chancellor for Research at UC Berkeley. She's also a senior faculty scientist at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. Her research is in high performance computing, programming languages, compilers, parallel algorithms, and automatic performance tuning. She currently leads the Exabiome project on scalable tools for analyzing microbial data and co-leads the Berkeley Benchmarking and Optimization Bebop group. Please welcome our faculty speaker, Professor Kathy Yellick.
Thank you very much, David, and congratulations, class of 2023. You've made it. You're here, you excelled in high school um, with a record that got you into Cal. You survived the lower division with the grades to get into the major, and you finished endless homeworks, projects, and exams to arrive here today. You're graduating in the best major at the best campus, the best university in the world. Congratulations. <laughs> Now I'm just gonna tell you uh, three quick stories, a little bit about myself and about my family because family is very important. And um, each one has a little lesson um, and also it describes a different way to think about your computer science degree, about who you can be and what you can do. And pay atten a special attention if you're still looking for a job. Um, so the first one is about how I became a computer scientist. I'm what we call a computer science discoverer. I start, when I started college, I didn't know what I wanted to major in, but I knew one thing, I did not want to major in computer science. It was hard, it was full of nerds, and um, worst of all, my big brother was studying it. So I wanted to do things like build bridges, or design spaceships, or fly to the moon. So there I was signing up for classes my freshman year, and one of my dormitory friends told me, just take one computer science course because someday it might be useful. And so I, I, there I was in 61A. Well, it had a different number because I was at MIT, which you can tell from the ugly uh, re regalia that I'm wearing here. Um, and, uh, and then I met in that class recursion and I met abstraction, and I met metacircular interpreters, and I was hooked. And I'll let you all describe what these things are to your parents, so I don't have to. But um, I, I, I'll let, I, I loved the beauty of it. I loved, the, um, I loved learning about computation, uh, discovering new algorithms, and that would make my software faster, and new data structures that would make it simpler. And I love the feeling of exhilaration when the last bug was removed, when the code finally worked, you know, when you can stop banging your head against the wall. Now, this story is also about the computer scientist as someone who solves puzzles, someone who uh, strengthens the foundations and debunks the myths of computer science. There are also still many puzzles to be solved from the, grand, uh, the grandiose, such as how would I program a quantum computer and what would I do with it, to the microscopic, which is, you know, how, how would this software become more elegant if I used a different variable name or added a new function here? The point of this is to find something that you love doing and something that gets your creative juices flowing and something that makes you want to get up in the morning. So I don't get to write much code these days, but every once in a while on the weekend, when I miss it a lot, I, I write a little Python code or I write some uh, Excel formulas just for fun. So my second story is about technology. Um, when I was about five years old, my mother taught me to ride a bike. We lived in Bismarck, North Dakota, which is very flat. Um, it's so flat, actually, that um, in the winter, which is also so cold, that they would flood the playground at the, at the um, grade school and turn it into an ice skating rink. So learning how to ride a bike in Bismarck is great. A lot easier than it is, by the way, here in Berkeley, as I learned when I was trying to teach my kids how to ride, ride a bike. Um, because you just pedal a little bit on the flat ground, and then you coast a lot, and then when the bike slows down, you just hop off. So there was one hill, small hill in our neighborhood, and my best friend lived on top of it. And one day I was coasting down that little hill um, when I saw a big garbage truck coming perpendicular to the road that I was coming down on. And that is when I realized I did not know how to stop the bike. My mother had forgotten to tell me that there were brakes on the bike and how to use them. So I had to figure out what to do. And the next thing I realized was that I was wearing flip-flops. Um, so I will just end the story by saying I still have all of my toes, but I also have quite a few scars to go with it. So the lesson here is understand the capabilities and the risks of the technology that you're using. And also, by the way, don't ride a bike wearing flip-flops. Now, as a faculty member here at Cal, I've had the great pleasure to work on a lot of team projects, many of them with other faculty here. And I, what I've learned is that for some of the faculty, what inspires them is the technology itself, the landscape of what are the technical problems they're facing today. 
And so um, this can be problems like how do you have more reliable storage or faster processors or parallel computers or better security? This type of computer scientist examines the technology landscape and looks for opportunities uh, for problems that are urgent, either because the technology has limits or because it offers some new opportunities. So if you're watching the technology landscape today, it would be hard to miss ChatGPT, which we've already heard about. Um, or more generally, what's called a large language model. Now, the latest versions of these things outperform most humans on SAT exams, on GRE exams, on AP exams. Apologies to all the younger siblings in the audience who are struggling to take these things. And it can pass the bar exam and the medical licensing exam. But there are also new kinds of jobs. There's prompt engineers and data labelers, and there's new roles for old jobs. There's jobs for poets and musicians and writers who can help improve these systems. And there's tremendous need for people who understand the technology and its implications for society. For privacy, I also did not use ChatGPT because the idea of uploading this speech in its raw form into ChatGPT and possibly having some open AI analysts look at it just kind of weirded me out. For safety, can AI make good medical decisions? Does it have to be perfect or only as good as humans? For equality of access, will they start charging us for using these tools? Should they be charging us for these tools, at least a carbon credit to account for the energy used to produce these models? We need people who understand the technology and anticipate the implications. People design technical, legal, and policy protections, and people to demystify the technology because, to quote Arthur Clarke, any sufficient advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Now, my last story is about failure and opportunity. And I'll start by just saying, telling a little story about my father. My father was, uh, went to college to be an electrical engineer, which was the, the thing to do um, in his generation. But he did not make it through the lower division. He ended up dropping out of college, and he went to work for the telephone company, and he was a member of the union. In fact, he became the boss of the, un the union, local union boss. Um, and then he became, perhaps because of that, a manager, uh, later a lobbyist, and eventually an executive. And what that taught me was the, that the road that you take is not always the one that you plan on, um, and it also taught me uh, resilience and the importance of people. So in, in my, um, as, when I was an undergraduate, I had no aspirations of going on to graduate school or becoming a professor or certainly an administrator. In fact, I had a permanent job all lined up. I just had to wrap up my undergraduate thesis, which I was doing as part of an internship out here in Silicon Valley. It was kind of a lame project, to be honest. I was writing software that was supposed to act exactly like a calculator, a calculator called the HP-12C. The only problem was that I had to make the software behave exactly like the calculator so that people could use either the calculator or the computer and go back and forth. But the arithmetic in the calculator, which by the way was designed by a Berkeley professor, um, and the computer were different. They used different kind of arithmetic. So I decided that I had to write a software to emulate the calculator kind of down to the level of bits. And um, then one day when I was working in my office hard in the software, somebody came in and said, you know, we could just take the chip from the calculator and stick it into the computer. Computers were a lot bigger in those days. And I, they canceled my project. Um, and I recommended that they cancel my project because I thought this was such a great idea. So the next day I packed up my new used car with all of my belongings and I drove across the country back to the school on the East Coast. And I felt like a failure and my parents were actually quite suspicious, having not finished college, what was I doing there in graduate, graduate school, but may, or, and that maybe I was never going to finish my undergraduate degree. But you know what I discovered? I learned about research. I learned about writing papers, proving theorems, building systems that proved theorems, and solving open questions. But more importantly, I learned that these were my people. I felt more at home in the graduate students than in the valley. And there weren't very many women in the graduate program, but I was welcomed by the graduate students that I, I worked with, and I also connected with a group of women that were former rowers along with me, and we created a small graduate rowing team. So the point of this is to find your people, um, and whether they're at work or outside of work, and empower the people around you um, to have the confidence to ask questions and to share their best ideas. 
In a slightly ironic twist, after moving back to Berkeley, that Berkeley professor that I mentioned who indirectly killed my research project, he became my academic father-in-law. I met his, one of his gr former graduate students, we got married and now have children. <laughs> so don't sweat the setbacks. Grab the opportunities, whether they're personal or professional. And today I have the best job on campus. I get to learn about all of the amazing research that goes on across the campus and what people are doing, many of, of which is using computing. Using computers to design sponge-like materials that capture carbon from the air or design new drugs to cure, treat cancer. Algorithms to find bias in housing, in the labor market, in the legal system. Using computational modeling to understand the impacts of climate change, the spread of disease, or geopolitics. And in my own work, using supercomputers to discover new life forms that exist in the oceans by analyzing all of the data in all of the oceans of the world. There are many companies, laboratories, university projects, all looking for people with your expertise. And don't be afraid of taking risks, and don't be afraid of failure. You'll get feedback, you will have doubts, and you will be praised, and you will be discouraged. My final quote is from uh, one of my favorite writers, Annie Dillard, about her own vocation. There is neither proportional relationship nor an inverse one be between a writer's estimation of a work in progress and its actual quality. The feeling that the work is magnificent and the feeling that it is abominable are both mosquitoes to be repelled, ignored, or killed, but not indulged. So remember, you are graduating from the best major at the best campus and the best university in the world. Go Bears! Thank you, Professor Yellick. Our commencement speaker today truly embodies the spirit of embracing the potential of computer science to change the world. Clyde Rodriguez has a BS degree in EECS from Berkeley and is an alumnus of Harvard Business School. He's a member of the university's engineering advisory board and was one of the three recipients of Berkeley's 2020 Distinguished EECS Alumni Award. Clyde is currently the founder of Oliva Mobility, a startup focused on empowering people through technology. The title of Clyde's speech is Searching for the Soul of a New Machine. Please welcome Clyde Rodriguez. Good afternoon, graduates, faculty, distinguished guests. I am honored to be here with you on this day of celebration. Thank you to CS Division Chair David Wagner for inviting me to deliver this address. Graduates, your day is finally here. You've attained an education from one of the most coveted computer science programs from the best public university in the world. Congratulations. We are one in one of the most iconic gathering spaces on campus, one that has hosted legends like Bob Dylan, Miles Davis, Santana, Leonard Cohen, and who could forget the band that defined the Berkeley tie-dyed era, the Grateful Dead. <laughs> but here's the best part. From now on, it'll also be known for hosting the legendary computer science class of 2023. <laughs> Today marks the completion of a full circle for me. Years ago, I stood on this same spot as an improbable representative of my class to deliver the College of Engineering commencement keynote. I left as an ambitious young man from a working class family, ready to pursue long-held dreams beginning with a career at Microsoft. I return a changed person, living proof that education, and in particular a Berkeley education, transforms lives. I'd like to share four insights with you the first speaks to the power of numbers. My twin sister Julie and I were born in Northern California to Mexican immigrant parents who grieved the lack of a formal education. About a year after our birth, 
we moved to Mexico to live with our paternal grandmother, but ultimately ended up homeless. My parents built a makeshift house with a tin roof, a dirt floor, no running water or electricity. I was oblivious to these conditions and have faint memories of being a pretty happy kid who loved playing with marbles, a wooden top, and other toys that visiting relatives gifted us. A few years later, we made our way to Central California and became migrant farm workers. While many of our classmates enjoyed fun summers at home, visits to Disneyland, or family ski trips to Tahoe, our routine was quite different. We typically would wake at 4 a.m. and travel for up to two hours to a distant garlic or grape field in towns frequented by civil rights activists, Cesar Chavez, Dolores Huerta, and others that helped secure agency for farm workers. The garlic harvest was particularly excruciating for my older sisters and me, most of us not yet teenagers. We toiled from early dawn until the scorching sun became unbearable, muscles aching from lifting heavy baskets of garlic overhead, our knees bruised by the hard earth as we excavated bulbs with our bare hands, sweat-drenched clothes clinging to our skin. At the end of the day, we rested in our secluded home on a desolate farm road, surrounded at night by the sounds of crickets, frogs, and an occasional coyote, only to repeat the whole Sisyphean routine again the next morning. These early experiences cultivated respect for unity, collaboration, and service, values which were imperative for our very survival. In a less dramatic fashion, they also influenced the values I carry into my professional life. I have fond memories from the earliest times of Azure, or Red Dog as it was internally known at Microsoft, when we brought a small team of brilliant networking experts to solve some of the toughest scaling challenges and contribute to Microsoft's cloud services reinvention. The magnitude of obstacles the team faced seemed insurmountable at times, but it is in such moments that the essence of teamwork, ingenuity, and resilience really shines. I encourage you to seek help when needed, cultivate a strong support network, and stay in touch with fellow graduates sitting here with you today. Develop empathy for colleagues and recognize that everyone struggles at one point or another. Often, they just need a hand, a kind word, or a mentor. Allyship is a powerful lifeline as well for underrepresented groups who often feel unseen, unsafe, and unsupported. The second insight, the power of purpose. At the age of 11, I witnessed an accident one morning that altered the course of my life. While working alongside family in a foggy vineyard, tying grapevines to a wire, a cane suddenly became loose and whipped my mother across the face. She fell to her knees as I raced to her side. She assured me that she was okay, but her tears and a thick, bright red line now running across her gentle face gave her away. In that instance, I was filled with a mix of anger and conviction, what my father often calls coraje. I stepped back to look at her again and said, one day, I'm going to take you out of this place, I promise you. This dramatic pledge at a young age became my life's purpose for many years. It gave my studies greater significance and most critically, fuel when I was on the brink of giving up. As you navigate the next stage of your careers, remember that time is fleeting. You'll avoid regrets by anchoring your efforts in a substantial goal worthy of your energy and time. Some of you already possess that clarity. Perhaps you too discovered it at a young age. Hold on to it. No matter how much you plan, life rarely unfolds in easy, predictable, linear manners. As it did for mariners in ancient times, a North Star will keep you on course when inevitable storms push you astray. Third insight, perseverance. My decision to attend Berkeley was first inspired by a fateful high school field trip to the university. Imagine you're an ambitious kid 
living in a rural farm town where the most exciting discovery was a tadpole swimming in the canal across the street. Suddenly, you find yourself at Lawrence Hall of Science listening to a remarkable woman, a famed biology professor named Marion Diamond, discuss her research into Einstein's brain. You struggle to process her words. Wait, did she just really say that she held the brain of one of the most consequential humans to ever, that ever lived? I was enraptured by the opportunities for discovery at Berkeley. Once here, I followed home in the university's EECS program. In it, I saw a path to a rewarding career inspired by professors whose research was redefining an industry. In the process, churning out graduates that were changing the world. My early momentum would not last. The hopes of fulfilling noble dreams suffered a slow and painful death. While taking a linear algebra exam at Latimer Hall, just down the hall from here, the hill from here rather, a housemate entered the auditorium. The campus police was looking for me. I left without completing the test and learned that my father had been brutally attacked and was in the intensive care unit at Salinas Valley Memorial Hospital. I'll never forget driving in agonizing rush hour traffic down 101 to see him. He survived. Barely. Unfortunately, my grades that semester did not, nor did my focus. I withdrew from the university and moved back to Central California to help my father recover and to assist my family. When I was ready to return, the university denied my application for readmission. I was devastated. I discovered that I could take EECS courses through UC Extension taking the same courses as full-time students. After successfully completing several of them, I petitioned the college for readmission and was again denied. On my second attempt, the Dean of Student Affairs sternly told me to, that I did not belong here, that I should enroll elsewhere, and to stop wasting both his time and mine. I had not yet proven that I could succeed here, and I was determined to change that. I spent weeks collecting what remained of my shattered spirit I read a Japanese proverb somewhere that said, fall seven times, stand up eight. And again, began another semester through UC Extension. That semester, Professor John Warsnick invited me to assist him as a teaching assistant for CS150. When the semester ended, I confided in him my predicament. To my surprise, he wrote a remarkable letter to the dean extolling my teaching skills and noting that I had become the favorite TA for many students. He concluded his letter by stating that he strongly supported my readmission. I still have a copy of this letter today. Once again, I walked to McLaughlin Hall, past the imposing Corinthian columns that flank its entrance, climbed the stairs to room 308, and met with the dean's assistant. He shared encouraging news, this time, my application would be reviewed by a special committee. He emphasized, however, that their decision would be final. I would not be allowed further petitions. Days later, while working as a tech support technician at Chevron's refinery in Richmond, I received the news I had longed to hear. I had been granted readmission. I hopped on a bicycle and raced through the refinery out of sheer joy like a madman. Less than six months later, I completed the requirements for graduation. After being selected as a student commencement speaker by a committee of graduating students and faculty, I walked to this stage and addressed my graduating class. Five years after a moving truck bound for Seattle arrived at my 450-square-foot apartment in El Cerrito, I flew home to visit my parents. With my eight siblings gathered around their dining table, I handed my mother an envelope. She pulled the letter from within and asked, ¿Y esto? What's this? It was a note from a bank informing my parents that their mortgage had been fully paid. Their Thank you. Thank you. 
More importantly, their 40 years of working in the fields had come to an end. And the promise made by an 11-year-old boy in a foggy vineyard had been fulfilled. Remember that failure need not mean the death of your dreams. We can draw inspiration from engineering itself, where it is necessary to test, refine, a harden a system before successful launch. The same applies to taking risks and conquering fear in pursuit of a life of consequence. A final insight, service to others. One of the greatest rewards of my career has been the opportunity to travel the world and meet people whose lives have been changed by technology. The impact our industry has had on all of us and on society at large is among the greatest examples of human ingenuity and progress. We are now at a historic crossroads. You are graduating during a time of unlimited opportunity, particularly with advancements in AI and the changes it will bring to every sector of life. It is an incredibly exciting time. But you are also the first generation of graduates facing unprecedented concerns about the impact of these new technologies on humanity. Existential dangers once relegated to science fiction have become real and are accelerating at a pace few imagined. With grave consequences for the fabric of society, most notably on the meaning of truth and on social cohesion. For years, we have raced to build a machine that could pass the Turing test without considering the consequences of one that could. The problems before computer scientists are no longer purely technical. They have evolved to demand serious and urgent attention to ethical implications as well. Addressing them will require a multidisciplinary approach and private-public sector partnerships, an approach that is among Berkeley's greatest strengths. As we progress, we must continuously ask ourselves, how should we guide this important work in service to the advancement of society, not to its destruction? To borrow from a book's title by Tracy Kidder, how will we find the soul of this new machine? The easy path is to ignore these issues and to continue producing systems with awesome power without regard for their consequences. I encourage you to be bold, to resist the comfort of remaining neutral on issues of such vital importance, and to summon the courage to speak truth to power when you see integrity at risk. I know from my own experience working in various sectors how uncomfortable that can be. But we must face these issues head on and to help society preserve many of the fundamental freedoms, fundamental freedoms that we enjoy. And of course, there is no literal thing as a machine with a soul. The responsibility for injecting a social conscience into the design of these systems remains with all of us working in this privileged field. These problems bring much opportunity, many of them incredibly exciting for innovation, something for which Berkeley has prepared you very well. Berkeley alumni across many fields have gone on to solve some of the hardest problems facing society. You have been given the knowledge and tools to continue that legacy. I can't wait to see what your ingenuity produces. There is no more noble act than to use our gifts in service to others and the preservation of the collective soul that binds us all. It is above all a mission worth fighting for together with purpose and perseverance. Congratulations again, class of 2023, Fiat Looks, and Go Bears. Thank you. I'm pleased to be able to celebrate this year's graduating class with some of our student awards. These students have shown excellence in teaching, research, academics, and or leadership. So will the following students please join me here to the right of the podium. Han Paris Zhang. Dashing B. Tian Yo, 
Abo Falaka. Yeah. Arlit Miranda Torres. So first, I'd like to present the highest academic achievement awards for the EECS department and the computer science major to this year's recipients. The EECS department citation award goes to Han Perez Zhang. The computer science major citation goes to Dashing B. Please join me in congratulating these winners. Next, I'd like to present the annual awards to recognize the contributions and achievements of our CS scholars. The Computer Science Scholars Program is a learning community that's aimed at supporting individuals from underrepresented communities by helping them access and thrive in computer science at UC Berkeley. This year, we'll recognize three students. Um, for excellence in computer science, Tian Chen Liu. Thank you, thank you. This award is presented to a CS scholar who demonstrates outstanding work in the field of computer science through innovation, scholarship, and research. The next award is presented to a CS scholar who embodies the mission of the CS Scholars Program to increase diversity in the field of computer science through academic, social, and personal support. This student has exemplified leadership through their service contributions to our campus and broader communities. For leadership in CS, Abel Falekai. Yeah. Finally, the last award will be presented to a CS scholar who's excelled beyond adversity. The students demonstrated academic perseverance and achievement. For Diversity Achievement Award, Arlet Miranda Torres. You may now have a seat. I'd also like to recognize another award winner. In EECS, we have a culture where we value teaching excellence very highly. When I came here, I was told that the biggest impact I would have would be the students that I teach and work with. And this year, one of the five winners of the campus UC Berkeley Distinguished Teaching Award was our own Professor Josh Hugg. That's the highest honor for teaching we give on this campus. Wow, there are a lot of you. Uh, this year we have more computer science students than ever before. We have high hopes that many of you will go on and do great things for your communities, for our country and for the world. We want to hear back from you when you achieve life goals. We care about all of you, not only today as you leave us as graduating seniors, but as our alumni throughout your lives. And we'd like to now take this opportunity to recognize each of you by name. We will present next the degree certificates. Uh, uh, okay, uh, don't worry, you, you still passed, you're gonna graduate. Uh, I'm supposed to read this, okay. A photo of each graduate will be taken after they walk across the stage and receive their scroll. So you're gonna get your picture taken. And we ask that all our guests remain seated. You know, you gotta let all the people have their moments, right? Cool, so, until the ceremony's over, thanks.
Han Paris Jong. Da Shang Bi. Abel Faleka. Arlette G. Miranda Torres. Sanjana Kirti Melkote. Gregoria Isabel Millencipher. James Patrick Weikert. Jacob Wu. Leo Jun Lin. Maxwell Yu Lin. Derwin Y. Wu. Julie Chun. Manal Siddiqui. Aya J. Abushama. Kushi Vaidya. Jungwon Lee. Sean Yang. Rishab Kokol. Lauren E. Baker. Matthew Dworkin. William Furtado. Kanu Grover. Max Bograd. Franklin Huang. Ruo Fang Wang. Tian Chan Liu. Ted Zhang. Alex Howe. Han Chun Wong. David Chen. Chase Norman. Brendan Shi. Kenneth Kim. Kashvi Lalgudi. Lena John. Jack Sullivan Graves. Oh. 
Joseph P. Bertman. Shubham Jen. Vioma Raman. Camila Picansu Mesquita. Ethan Chang. Marie Louise Noel Torpida. Grace Yi. Alina Harry. Dane Tran. Austin Ho. Kushi Desai. Alexandra Liu. Raim Bekakshulikov. Ethan Bradley. Julia Dang. Brendan Benner. Hannah Abraham. Avakum Chauhan. Patrick is a goalie in Lewin. Julianne Bellavida. George Mateos. Hanale Pham. Sinue Chen. Christina Fan. Eve L. Lin. Riley Peterlins. Eric R. Wang. Selena Kim. Angela Yi Jun Chen. Kathy Han. Richard Liu. Devin Z. Atarva Patil. Aiden J. Vehemente. Richard Liu. Nicholas Nolte. Prajit R. Mohan. Victor Gauna. Tracy Shaw. Olivia Huang. Noor A. Teramzawi.
Iram Morshed. Aaron Sundarason. Nicholas Jennings. <laughs> Timothy Arlen Yang. Matthew Ao. Tommy Joseph. Seiji Chu. Akash Aaron D'Souza. <laughs> Kenneth Sue. <laughs> Kung Min Lin. <laughs> Zachary Rondos. Phoebe Lee. Jeremy Hughes. Qianwei Zhang. Ryan Chan. Andrew William Tran. Jedediah Tsang. Ryo Hayakawa. Divya Tadamedi. Stephanie Trin. Pranadi Kupa. Karthik Krishnan. Jay Kudva. Nitin Bupantaraju. Cyrus Kobad Bagwadia. William Crockett. Shirue Ruan. Gershon Lobana. Surid Saha. Ashray Khanna. Shrey Bhatt. Zara Punevala. Utkarsh Nath. Ishan Mather. Sahil Thacker. Omer Sasson. Orin Azad. Ryan Garay. Siddhant Raj.
Andrew Lee. Kelly Huang. Anson B. Kwan. Ernest Go. Yushi Ethan Chen. Sadiant Bahera. Ashley Yanchi Chang. Jasmine Ang. Aaron Tsai. Isabella Komenar. Matthew Sim. Stephen Ip. Tom Jang. Alexander Yen. Nalind Wavetti. Yerim Park. Yuan Rei Ju. An Rei Gu. Athena Leung. Jared Watrous. Alan Chim. Mahir Bell. Shide Dagani. Amy Yeun Kwan. Chanel Zhang. Arnav Verma. Nitya Krishna Kumar. Vikant Jagannathan. Deepak Raghu. Chloe C. We met. Sean S. Stephen. Amir Karim Sokari. Francois A. Akiki. Kyusuk O. Jia Yue Wang. Kue Nguyen. Guangchan Tom Shang. Austin Lee. Hannah Huang. Alexander Dong. Sonia Johansson.
Sage A. Williams Peroni. Mayavani M. Iyer. Jeffrey Wong. Franz Andrew Varela. Sophia Howard. Ashna Shah. Mohammed Mazin Sudhir. Roshan Ragula. Anirudh Chenapragada. Shivan Gupta. Sagar Mehta. Melanie Ruiz. Brianna Karina Lopez. Harry Dalal. Parsa Jorat. Harris Navid Shadmani. Zihan Jason Jung. Jessica Dong. Tian Chen Ji. Akhil Sachdev. Josh Roy. Eric Xiang. Jasper K. Shine. Ryan Johnson. Shivani Sharma. James Allen McFadden. Roger Hu. Daniel Dang. Austin Lin. Fakri Wadodo. Samuel Elgis. Sahil Morchi. Abhishek Kaduparambil. Owen Slay. Arjun Mariella. Zachary Christian Pfeiffer. Tyler Rathcamp. Lucy Chong Lee Guo. Jaden Quintana. Yu Sin Ye. Lei Hao. Corina Wu. Jerry Wong.
Ho Jong Arthur Kang. Amit Sant. Brandon Ho. Eileen Lowe. Sophia Rosehan Anwar. Shirley Xiao. Shay A. Ma. Kenneth Chi. Ethan Lee. Jacob J. Kim. Tom J. Sue. Haley Jang. Cyrus Hamarani. Eugenia Chen. Sahil Gupta. Adi Pillai. Matthew Kang. William Liu. Si Chung Pan. Ching Yuan Liu. Sangam Sogani. Indu Abilash. Shivali Yadulapuram. Rishi Balakrishnan. Nishant Anand. Abhishek Rangarajan. Jin Xuan Liang. Andrew Wang. Aniket Kapadia. Anusha Silla. Jason Noah Diwa. Utsav Dilip Kumar Savalia. Maria Christina Hines. Jason S. Wong. Aditya Singh. Keaton Schwartz. Justin Yi Fan Shao. Jeju Stephen Young. Shu Fan Li. Sun Yu Wang. Andrew Jong. Cassandra Milax. Catherine J. Nguyen. Khan Pham. Bernie Miao. David Kim. Mohammed Al Musawi.
Daniel Highland Laird. Ian Shen. Jeffrey Chang. Justin Lin. Jack Chen. Adina Chen. Joy Zhang. Yu Wen Zhang. Nathan Nakamitsu. Richard Lee. Sean Kim. Kenneth Lien. Amy G. Chen. Xu Ming Zhu. Carly Ji Yi Fang. Vincent S. Kang. Amit Singh Bandal. Xin Yi Guo. Jia Yu Ella Shi. Michael Chang. Ze Yi Yan. Jerry Hu. Victor Zhang. Tyler Badra. Jing Chi Zhou. Ranesh Prasad. Anik Gupta. Eric Hua. Pranay Rajpal. Aditya Ramakrishnan. Jaren Cock. Jay Fang. Ashley Zhang. Catherine Zhang. Hayden Gwynn. Nicholas Chan. Jiawei Isaac Ong. Jerry William Jong. Anna Zhao. Amanda Zhang. Bohan Yu. Wei Bo Young. Natalie Kemper. Johannes Fong. Hugh Lau. Kwa D. Pham. Ishan Bansali. Anirudh Kotapali. Nathan Tausik. Annie Nguyen. Shayan Ghosh. Marvin Du. Eric Yi Chi Zong. 
Brandon Suen. Brandon Chang. Kyle Yu. Yesong George Kim. Rudolph Kyung J. Lee. Paul Ahn. Christy Lum. Catherine Guy. Wen Han Sun. Spencer Robert Jenkins. Kevin Ahn. Vaibhav Mohata. Rhea Senthil Kumar. Adam Torres. Marcos Jesus Osorio. Sela Artime Roach. Joel Moriah Wally. Ronel Gomez. Joshua G. Rachel Lee. Michael Jew. Nikhil Simhambatla. Pranav Chabra. Aaron Ospinwall. Rishi Tumala. Anish Gatikar. Daniel Lee. Rishi Arjun. Daniel Yang. Benjamin J. Young. Juliet Kim. Audrey Yuna M. Ike Wong. Rohit Sajit. Vishal Palikar. Uthman Momin. Aniket Singh. Annie Joe. Crystal Fung. Jessica Yang. Lulu Yu. Jared Keating. Jeffrey Yao. Ni nee Oren. Arunin Thivayanathan. Andrew Chen. Stephen Mo. Christopher Yoon. 
Yuki Ito. Akes Bathal. Lisa Shin Yi Ye. Chan Fei Hu. Matthew Liu. David G. Kentaro Vadney. Samiha S. Mahin. Joshua J. Park. Jacob Yim. Sakshi Satpathy. Kafia Ahmed. Jasmine Tong Sealy. Sumana Nukala. Rachel Min. Kevin Mo. Daniel Lee. Patrick Yin. Alan Ding. Kyle Zhang. Andy Fang. Bruce Dang. Tiffany Fang. Su Yun Oh. Hao Tian Zhuo. Anderson Sai. Wen Hao Pan. Yu Chi Hu. Ding Chong Young. Hong Kong Lin. How Yu Fan. Yu Tsi Liu. Jing Jin. Aiden Tan. Isolde Fang. Jeremy Ferguson. Lin Nok Tran. Christina Marie Newman. Jonah No. Arushi Somani. Crystal Wong. Anton Alexandrovich Zabreko. Ege Usul. Zachary E. Zolman. Aiden Meyer. Andrew McGuire. Jonathan Mishkanian. Ali Naji Al Kahali. Yusuf Kadus. Julie Ma. Joel Rodiel Lucero. Ben Kwan. 
Min Trong Fan. Ishan Dam. Jennifer Buja. Aishwarya Gunasilan. Abhinaya Srikant. Aditi Raja. Shanak Bandarkar. Chu Su Ran. Austin Lay. Tarong Srivastava. Owen Long. Rini S. Vasan. Arshia Singani. Aditya Vallabhani. Tarun S. Sridhar. Rohan Gulhar. Kate Gwim. Ryan J. Chen. Isha Srinivasan. Sanath S. Sangupta. Pradeep Sambanda Muthaya. Aditya Paramasavam. William Lewis. Nathan Devaraj Dyer. Amrita Rajan. Daniel Dechev. Anuj Desai. Neil Kamdar. Yubin Hu. Saketh Malyala. Alice Ye. Avantika M. Ghosh. Tarek Sufi. Shrija Aparaju. Ishan Mauli Mishra. Seraph N. Woodbury. Surya Sunkavali. Gyu Min Kwan. Kunal Sundara. Monis Mohyuddin. Nikhil Venkat. Bharat Chandra. Rahul Ayer. Adam Salguero. Julia Nicholson. Samarth Goel. Neil Ayan Sen. Michelle Kroll. Janessa Ma. Allison Hussein. Sydney Karimi. Imran Kalik Baporia. Jamshid Mystery.
Madison Carolyn Chaganjan Bohannon. Prachi Deo. Edison Chen. Jackie Kwok. Cindy Wong. Patrick R. Ju. Tim and T. Philip Kabranov. Sherry Fan. Nandini Singh. Shreyas Kampali. Aram Kazorian. Anish Bajaj. Jishin Lucy Liu. Srividya Ganga. Ria Vora. Matthew Poa. Christopher So. Akhil Sanka. Paris Aurora. Enzo Filangeri. Amit Palikar. Winston Kai. Akshat Jain. Avyankh Chala. Karan Deer. Karan Agarwal. Juliana Hashemi Asasi. Divid Sharma. Daniel He. Newman Chen. Zachary Shi. Joseph G. Liu. Ryan Gomez. Vikram Deepak. Advait Marate. Aman Supariwala. Rahul Mohan Kumar. Mihir Melind Welling. Anish Kanda. Kristen Chen. Akhil Sukhthankar. Kobe Gonzalez. Ethan Brown. Abik Ahuja. Brandon Ray Fajardo. Justin Shi. Jeffrey Wu. Oliver Ray Jiang. Ashwin Reddy. Ayush Pancholi. Kevin Shi. Pritavi Chabria. Alexander Kaichen. 
Mitch Dreyer. Ethan Ganibis. Aria Bastani. Michael Wildfoyer. Jessica Leong. Natalie Subak. Harmony He. Jennifer Lu. Kan Jen Chang. Asta Upadye. Alex Shu. Yevgeny Sizik. Shubham Banavakalar. Sudeep Rao. Siddharth Rajaram. Adamya Prakash Srivastava. Rahul Amara. Lauren Lee. Ji Yu Jung. Brianna Via Gavino. Max Kim. Tyler Yang. Richard Privilov. Rithwick Sudarshan. Param Nagda. Saeed Naeem. Michal Imtiaz. Aida Nayev Nazar. Alexander Trung. William E. Thulke. Tiger Ten Ma. Jun Nakamine. Asim Doriwala. Sarthak Comet. Peter Jing Zhang. Rajan Day. Connor Lien. Emily Sue. Stephanie Shao. Laren Chi. Renan Larpsharan. Lily Yang. Kalia Chu. Jorge Morales. Ryan Zhao. Kevin Wang Lu. Stephen Z. Chen. Min Lei. Truck Nguyen. Christopher A. Mercado. Marcus Hong. Elizabeth V. Nguyen. 
Shreya Nagpal. Shahar Sandhouse. Allison Lee. Michael Jung. Aaron Chang. Joshua Wong. Hanson Lillemark. Haroon Khalil. Ryan Liu. Yi Ming Ni. Zi Yu Dang. Eric Zhao. Kenneth Ian Shiel. Richard Ju. Monsi Gauda. Alana Lee. Xiaoyuan Ju. Simon Jovanovic. Parker Jacob Lishway. Richard Zhou Zhen. Yu Zhou Mo. Se Yun Chung. Annie Dai. Vasant Kumar. Daniel E. Ju. Wilson Nguyen. David Zhang. Nitin Nazir. Jonathan Luke Holabetz. Larry Yan. Tim Wong. Richa Coatney. Navya Campella. Emily Lee. Madeline Raywin Chen. Amar Shah. Nikita Jayaprakash. Jason Lee. Sheldon Shi. Austin Jung. Varun Neil Srivastava. Matthew Chorlian. Yu Fang Li. Isha Sandhu. Miriam P. Aviles. Albert Louis Jang. Justin Pao. Ryan Key. Edward Luna. Emily Chow. Hethel Shaw. Jennifer Yang. Rosalie Fung. Amrick Barrier. Ashwin Natampali. Sashrika Pandey. Ruslana Yurtin. Aryan Agrawal. Jake Austin. Pranav Jayachind. 
Peter Tong. Larry Gan. Lucas Matson Schauberg. Joseph Sorrell. Verena Yu. Chong Hua Liu. Adam Abdullah. Walid Latif. Kareem Kuja. Mohammed Abu Shark. Sufyan Tihami. Luke Leo. Jia Ping Xiao. Nigel Tang Chen. Selena Wong. Estella Wong. Ryan Sun. Lucas Chang. Jason Yang. Albert Su. Nathan Zhang. Matthew Cow. Jason Chahiono. Yimo Shu. Martin Zai. Zhou Jie Ding. Kelvin Lee. Gunjan Anand. Hirsch Gupta. Yash Gupta. Polkit Basin. Shu Ting Liu. Charlene Shen. Joy Chang. Evelyn Pin Jen Wu. Lucy Wan. Michelle Chen. Jojo Chen. David Max Wei. Albert Chang. Brian Liu. Charles Wong. Maria Hinyat. V. Tran. Wilson Wu. Leonard Wei. Daphne Pan. Joyce Jew. Amea Kunder. June Park. Megan E. Jun Yu. Rohit Mittal. Matthew Yu. Julian Mine. Raymond G. John T. Lay. 
Ryan Chun Yong Chan. Eric H. Chang. Christopher Wong. Andrew Zhao. Sydney Bowie. Annie Wong. Zhu Di Xia. Yi Yang Chen. William Wu. Jie Chen. Jian Zong He. Justin Zhang. Evelyn Liu. Amado Cabrera Monares. Shi Jia Young. Justin Shaw. Yi Wei He. Aaron Lee. Alex Shi. Mingyuan Ma. Yue Hong Zhang. PZ Zhang. Billy Hao Wen Huang. Anish Renga Sai Golakota. Amit Bhatt. Vikram Cherukuri. Suraj Pakala. Jay Menon. Yinglong Lin. Kevin Joe. Bryce Wong. Andrew Chen. Jacob Tao Jiang. Stephen Christopher. Sanjeev Prasad Thurgum. Brandon Lee. Ashwin Kumar. Janice Leong. Zining Ong. Ishil Puri. Mia Campdera Polito. Paola Noon. Cyrus Arvacha. And Amira O'Toole. Max Cronin Katzman. Christopher Fisher. Clara Mori. Anubhav Suri. Nicholas Gallen. Jasper Lee Emhoff.
Arda de Merci. Connor G. Manuel. Akshit Dewan. Satvik Sharma. Tim Tu. Chang Ying Sin. Crystal Lee. Juna Chen. Harry Wu. Jia Yao Li. Dylan Fang. William Zhang. Brianna Fan. Helen T. Yang. Dorothy Mao. Hunter Stroming. Albert Chang Liu. Will the candidates, we get to close this ceremony with the best part. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Computer Science please rise, if you would. <laughs> by virtue of the authority vested in me by the President of the University of California and by the Chancellor of the University of California at Berkeley, I hereby grant you the hard-earned and richly deserved degree of Bachelor of Arts in Computer Science. <laughs> Students, you may move your tassel from the right to the left. And that concludes our ceremony for today. Thank you for staying to the end. Thank you all and congratulations.